What is up? Darkside Phil here with another edition of the Hateful Truth video game review series. And uh, as you know, in 2011, uh, since I was taking this whole YouTube thing uh, seriously as my full-time job, I decided to branch out. I decided to start doing video game playthroughs of genres that I hadn't previously touched upon, including, you know, uh, Japanese role-playing games, um, sports, and also, in particular, what we're talking about today, racing. And so, when I was going through all the releases that were going to come out during the fourth quarter of 2011, this hardcore gaming season per se, there was one uh, that was a racing game that stuck out that I decided that I was going to try out, that game being Need for Speed The Run. And, you know, I actually kind of had some positive expectations coming into this game, because I previously in the year had played two other racing games. One was MotorStorm Apocalypse and the other was Driver San Francisco, both of which ended up being ended up being pretty outstanding in my opinion for what they were. And so Need for Speed the Run, I was hoping, hey, you know, two out of three so far really good. Hopefully, you know, we'll we'll end with a trifecta of really good racing games for racing fans and uh, and end out the year with a bang. Well, today we're gonna talk about Need for Speed the Run and uh Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get our trifecta. Let's put it that way. So, Need for Speed The Run. What is it? It is a racing game. Is it a racing simulator, or is it more of an arcade style racing game? Well, that's kind of hard to say, because the cars themselves, there is a wide variety of cars in Need for Speed The Run, uh, including the more, like, uh, underground style race cars, uh, supercars, exotic cars, muscle cars, there is a wide variety of cars, and there are a lot more cars that are actually unlockable when you purchase either the limited edition of the game, which I did, which all, all that means is the, the first print of the game, or if you unlock them while playing the game itself. So, at first glance you might say maybe this is a simulation game, maybe this is the kind of game where you pick a car and it simulates the way that car drives, but then you realize, after playing it for a little bit, that really a lot of the arcade style gameplay is in this game. Meaning you will hit walls and sure you'll lose speed, but you'll be perfectly fine and be able to continue with the race. Your car won't explode every single time that you run into another car. Although there are many times when you do hit cars at high speed and your car will break down and you'll have to start from a checkpoint. But for the most part, it is an arcade style racer. Okay? Very basic control scheme. You've got boost, you've got brake, you've got handbrake, you've got, you know, gas. That's it. Nothing crazy here, nothing off the wall, you're not shooting with weapons or anything like that. Need for Speed is at its core a solid, hard, or not solid, but a uh, standard racing, that's what I meant to say, a standard racing game. Everything you would expect from a standard racing game is there. So, let's talk about the different modes of Need for Speed The Run. There is a campaign mode, there is a challenge mode, and there is online play. So first we'll talk about the campaign. The campaign is the story of some guy, and I would love to tell you what his name is, Except for he's such a generic character that I have no fucking clue who he was. I've completely forgotten what his name was, and I only played the game like two to three days ago. So, I don't know. But anyway, this guy supposedly is a no well-known racer, and he owes a lot of money to the mob. And the mob's trying to kill him, so he has to find a way to make money quick. So he calls upon some friend of his, who again, her relationship to him is very not specific. The story here is very ambiguous and not very explained at all. But uh, some redhead girl decides to front him $250,000 so he can enter a race called The Run. And what The Run is, is a coast-to-coast -coast race starting in San Francisco, California and ending in New York, New York. And basically it's 250 people going from coast to coast in this crazy race trying to get to New York first. And whoever gets there first is going to win $250 million. So... <clears throat> What the game will do is take you through a coast-to-coast -coast tour of the United States, whether it's certain major cities such as Las Vegas, uh, Chicago, uh, a couple cities in Ohio like Cleveland, and then uh, New York, New York itself, or some of the interesting natural nature locales in between there such as Yosemite National Park and things like that. So you're going to get to see a variety of locales, a variety of... You'll be racing through deserts, you'll be racing through snow, you'll be racing through cities, you'll be racing through rural areas. You'll be doing all this in Need for Speed The Run's campaign. Now, obviously, it's not all going to just be driving of one style. They have to mix it up and they want to put some variety in the game. So what are the objectives when you're actually doing this coast-to-coast -coast race? Well, in some races, your goal will just be to beat 
a certain amount of racers. So one racer might say, okay, you're in a race with four other cars, come in first. And if you manage to do that by the end of the race, it'll take you from like 250th place in this national run race and move you up four slots. And so you're going to have a goal to win a certain amount of these races by the time you reach a certain major landmark like Las Vegas or Chicago. And so that is some of the gameplay. Now there are also stages where the game basically says, oh, you need to make up some time. So you have to get through this race. It's basically just a time trial race. You're not necessarily racing against anyone. You're just trying to get from point A to point B in a certain period of time while avoiding the pedestrian traffic. You know, the regular people who are just driving through the city, unbeknownst to them that there's a crazy country or a countrywide race going on through their town. And you have to reach a certain number of checkpoints within the race in order to progress to the next stage. If at any time you run out of time, because these are timed missions, you will have to restart from the previous checkpoint, and you get about five restarts per race. Now that's on normal difficulty. If you go on easy, you get more restarts. If you go on harder difficulties, you'll get less restarts. So that's another style of race. Now there's also another race called a battle race, where it'll be you against a certain number of opponents. And the goal here is not necessarily to just win the race and beat everyone, but to pass the opponent who's in front of you and hold your lead over him for a certain amount of time. So maybe there's three cars you have to beat. So the first thing you do is you pass the first car and you have to stay in front of him for 20 seconds and then he's eliminated from the race and then you can move on to the next car, try to eliminate him until finally you've eliminated everyone. So that's called battle. <clears throat> and then the final style of race is called rival races where it's just you one-on-one -on -one with someone else and it's a race to the finish. Basically you, you have to get to the end of the race first. And we're going to talk a lot about these four different modes and how they work and what doesn't work about them, okay? There is one other kind of gameplay in the game and it pretty much only happens one to two times during the game and it happens when, for whatever reason, during the cutscene of the story of the game, you end up outside of your car. Whether there's a roadblock and the police end up uh, arresting you at one point, or I think at one other point you're on the run from the mob or something like that. You're going to have weird quick time events where you're on foot and you have to push and mash certain buttons in order to get these quick time events to be successful. A little out of place for a racing game, but I think the reason that they were in there was to break up the gameplay a little bit and to add a little bit more to the story element of the game. I personally didn't care that the quick time events were in the game. I didn't think it was a detriment. If anything, my major complaint is there really is no story to the game. It's just, okay, win this race, and then once you win the race, you get the money, the game's over. There's really no explanation. There's no elaboration on these characters. You don't know why you owe money to the mob. Was it because you had to... I don't know, ransom someone who was kidnapped? Was it because you just wanted to go to Vegas and blow hundreds of thousands of dollars? You have no idea what you spent the money on, so there's no character elaboration at all during the course of this game. A little disappointing there for a game where if it had more information about the backstory and such, it might have been a more gripping game. But at its core, Need for Speed to Run is what it sets out to be a racing game. So now let's talk a little bit about the good things that I liked about the campaign, and the negatives about the campaign. The good things I liked about the campaign. Number one, this game uses the Frostbite 2 graphics engine. The graphics are fucking sweet, okay? When you're driving through some of these locales like uh, Las Vegas, you're going to say, wow, this does actually look like driving through Las Vegas. When you're driving through the mountain ranges with snow on them, there's actually a stage where there's a crazy avalanche. It looks amazing. It's a crazy set piece that you would expect from something like a Michael Bay movie. And incidentally, they actually had Michael Bay direct the commercial for this game. So that's kind of what they were going for with a lot of the stuff in this game. Um, the variety of locales. I like the, the fact that you start on the West Coast and you see some famous West Coast cities that you know. You end up going through Yosemite National Park, which is a real park. You end up going through the, the uh, Rocky Mountains. Then you end up going to the Midwest, which is a completely different kind of environment with the Great Plains and the storms and such that they have out there. Different type of road, different type of highways. Then you head into Chicago and then to the East Coast. I actually, when you're on the Jersey Turnpike and you're on these different areas, you can actually say, wow, this really does look like you're driving on the New Jersey Turnpike. And I know because I've been on the New Jersey Turnpike many times myself. So they did a really good job there of the environments and the graphics and really capturing the atmosphere of these areas that they were trying to emulate while doing this, uh, the design of this game. And that's pretty much the only stuff that I liked about the game. Oh yeah, also the music. I'd say the music was pretty good. The music selection, a little bit of a cool variety. You're going to have some cool, interesting songs that they've chosen. Some rock, some like alternative, some pop. But 
but with the exception of maybe one or two songs that I really didn't like, I the, I really kind of got into some of the music when you're when you're doing the driving and the racing, so that's good. But what didn't I like about the game? Okay, first of all, right off the bat, I can tell you since I beat the campaign, there are about three to four stages in this game that are repeated, even though the game claims that you're in different parts of the country. So there's actually one stage in the Midwest with like you're on a rural road, there's a barn or whatever, and then. When you get to New Jersey, they claim that you're, I'm sorry, when you get to Pennsylvania, they claim that you're in Pennsylvania. And the only thing they change is they flip the track, so you go from the end of it to the start of it, backwards, and they, they put, uh, like, extra stuff on the trees, so it looks like maybe there's apples on the trees or whatever. It's the same fucking track, and it's such a cop-out. They do this several times, especially when you're in Chicago, they do it multiple times. When you're in Ohio, they do it a couple times. They just reverse tracks, and they make you act like it's a new track. It's not. You're doing the driving on the same fucking track multiple times, and it's a cop-out. I don't know why they did that. That's really lame that they have repeat tracks. <clears throat> but trust me, there are many more problems outside of just the tracks that need to be spoken about. Okay, so first of all, the whole idea, and this is, this is a consistent thing that happens with a lot of different games, the difficulty level of Need for Speed The Runs campaign. There will be a time period when you will probably, if you're like me and you're a common gamer, maybe you're not great at racing games, but you still like them, they're fun to you, you'll be able to beat something like, I don't know, five missions in a row with really not that much difficulty. Maybe one or two of them you'll beat by the skin of your teeth, but you'll win them all in a row. And then all of a sudden you'll run into a mission that's really fucking hard. And you can't figure out why this one is so hard compared to the others. And there are a couple that I come to mind. There was one that was a time trial mission. It wasn't one where I was racing anyone. You're in the Midwest. You're on a narrow two-lane load, two load, two road that... Uh, constantly winds and turns, and there's traffic. There's a lot of traffic. So you'll be driving, and keep in mind, it's only a two-lane road. There's a car in front of you, and there's a car coming. So what the fuck do you do? You can't come to a stop, because if you do, you waste valuable seconds, and you're not going to fail. You're not going to get to the next checkpoint in time. If you keep going at maximum speed, now you have to try to maneuver your car between these two cars on a narrow road, and frequently you hit the cars. So it's extremely fucking frustrating, and a lot of the times, it's just... You're like, why is it so hard? I just beat five stages in a row with no problem. Now, this one's so hard, and then, of course, when you get to the next stage, it's easy. It's easy to you. And it's like, why the fuck do they interject these really difficult stages in the middle? Whatever happened to back in the day when the games had increasing levels of incremental difficulty as you progressed in the game? I would fully expect that the last stage of this game is difficult. And you know what? The last stage of this game is pretty difficult. But pretty much for the most part because it's not like the rest of the game, and we'll get to that. But that's okay. That's acceptable to me. What's not acceptable is having stages in the middle of your game that are harder than the rest of the fucking game. Uh, there's actually another stage that's one of these battle stages. You're trying to bypass three cars on a highway while there's pedestrian traffic and the mob is constantly coming up after you and shooting you. And you would say, well, Phil, can't you just outrun the mob? But the answer is no, because this game uses what's called rubber band AI for a lot of different things in it. And so now, let's go on to my next point with the problems that I think this game has. Rubber band AI. Now, what is rubber band AI? This is used frequently in racing games, especially games like Mario Kart and such, where you pass everyone on the track. And if this were a real race, since everyone just wiped out behind you, there's no way they're ever going to catch up. They're 15 seconds behind you on the track. How could they possibly catch up unless you fuck up and start hitting everything on the track and fuck up yourself? That's the only way. But this game doesn't give a shit. They're, especially during the rival battles in the game, you will bypass your rival. By far, you'll blow right by them. And the game will even say, oh, he's 15 seconds behind. And you're flying. You're going maximum speed, your top speed you can go, not hitting anything, making every curve with good time. And then all of a sudden, you'll notice something. The indicator that says how far behind your rival is will be short, smaller and smaller and smaller. And next thing you know, your rival's in your face. And you're like, wait a minute. You ate the dust. You, you fell off the track 15 seconds behind me. How the fuck are you right up neck and neck with me now? It doesn't make any sense. So what the game does, it basically, the reason they call it rubber band AI, it stretches them apart because you pass them. The game snaps them back to where you are to add challenge to the game. And is that necessarily fair? 
No, is it a problem? A lot of the times it's not, because some of the rivals are pretty easy to beat, but there are one or two rivals in this game where it's extremely fucking frustrating that they're driving a fucking... There was a, a stage, I was in a Lamborghini, my opponent was in a Nissan, and we were driving on the same straightaway, I was maxing out my speed, hitting my nitrous boost to the max, and the Nissan pulls right by me and flies by me. Uh, what the, was it a fucking space Nissan? Like what Nissan can fucking blow by a Lamborghini at max speed? It blows your fucking mind. And this is the bullshit rubber band AI. The game basically cheats, and that's really frustrating when you're actually trying to, you know, especially someone like me. I don't play the Need for Speed games all the time. I'm just trying to enjoy the game. I don't want to have to replay the same stage 42 times because the game cheats. It'd be one thing if I legitimately fucked up and lost, but the game actually cheats. And it's a huge detriment. It's extremely fucking annoying. Some other problems with the game. There are game bugs. There's a, a, a decent amount of annoying game bugs that fucked with me during my campaign run of this game. One annoying game bug was during one of the harder stages. It was actually the same stage I had mentioned. The Midwest stage, two-lane road. It's a time trial and there's a lot of traffic. I had two restarts left. So I had, I had reached a checkpoint near the end of the stage. And I had maybe 40 seconds to beat the stage. And I had two restarts left, so if I failed once, I would be able to try again, fail twice, be able to try again, and then finally, I would have to start over. So, I'm booking it, I'm booking it to the finish line, and the counter's going out, two, one, and the counter still reads one, and I go through the finish line, and I actually, I said, yes, I finally did it. And the game says, try again, and forces me to restart the entire race. What? Let me just reiterate that. I actually go through the end of the race within the time limit. I had two restarts, so regardless if there was a bug and the game thought that I didn't actually make it through, I should have had two attempts to retry and start again from the final checkpoint of the race. The game decided to throw all that away and say, fuck you, Phil, you lose, try again from the beginning. What the fuck were they thinking? How can you have a game bug like that in a game that's only racing? Uh, it basically gives you the middle finger right in the middle of the fucking game. That is ridiculous. Now, another game bug that I found, there is a stage that is actually in, I believe it's uh, uh, Ohio. It's a highway in Ohio. It's that battle that I told you about where you're trying to beat the three cars and the mobs after you. There is a dirt road that you have to get off the highway and drive down. And on this dirt road, there's a series of lamp posts along the right-hand side of the road. So obviously, you need to try to hug the left at high speed so that you can keep going and win the race. There is a bug, at least when I was playing, and if you don't believe me, watch the, the, my playthrough. You will see this bug, and the people actually comment on the video and say, yeah, Phil's absolutely right. This is a horrendous game bug. The game thinks I'm hitting the light poles even when I'm in the middle of the street. Even when I'm on the left-hand fucking side of the street, the furthest possible place I could be from the light pole, when I drive down that street, my car goes boom, like I hit the light pole, and I lose all momentum, and I repeatedly lost this race, something like eight or nine times because of this ridiculous invisible light pole that apparently is in the middle of the dirt road. It's another unacceptable kind of game bug that anyone who had tested the game would have found. Another problem <clears throat> is that sometimes the checkpoints that you can restart from don't actually le legitimately restart you in the situation you were in. So for example, there might be a checkpoint where the mob was after you, and but you just got rid of him. He wiped out. So you're going down and you pass by the guy you're trying to beat in the race, and uh-oh, you fuck up and you lose the race. When you start from the checkpoint again, all of a sudden the mob's on your ass. And you're like, wait a minute, I just made that car wipe out before I hit the checkpoint. Why did the car just respawn behind me now that I'm at the checkpoint and I'm restarting, it makes no sense. So the game has problems. Let's put it that way. The game has a lot of fucking problems that should have been tested and should have been determined that, you know, this is horrible for a kind of game that this is. <clears throat> so how long is the campaign of Need for Speed the run? Well, if you're an expert Need for Speed player and you know every single car that's the best for every style of track, it, the actual gameplay of this if you were to not ever fuck up, is roughly just over two hours. It's like two hours and 15 minutes or something like that. However, it took me eight fucking hours to beat the campaign of this game because it's so fucking annoying with the game bugs, the hard stages that are just so fucking hard compared to the rest of the game. 
it's extremely frustrating. And last but not least, the one like kick to the balls, the final stage of the game isn't like anything else in the entire game, and here's what I mean. Anywhere else in the entire game, you're trying to race and beat whoever you're racing against, especially a rival race. In this final stage, your goal isn't to do that. Your goal is several times during the stage is just simply to survive. And if you survive what's going on, you advance to the next part of the race, and then you try again. So, for example, there's one part where you're going the wrong way across a, a famous bridge in New York. There's cars coming at you, and your rival is ahead of you. So you're like, fuck, I'm going to lose the race. No, your goal here is just to dodge the cars and get to the next part of the race, not to actually catch up to your rival. So if you try to go maximum speed and you end up dying a thousand times, you're completely wasting your time. You could go at a snail's pace if you want. Your rival won't win the race. He actually waits for you on the other side of the bridge, but you would never know that. Similarly to that, there's another point in the final stage where you go underground into the subways of New York and you have to dodge trains. And again, you're thinking, i got to go max speed here because if I don't, I'm going to lose the race. No, you can take your time, be careful, and survive these trains because as soon as you come out of the tunnels, no matter how slowly you did it, your rival appears right next to you. So all of a sudden, at the final stage, they completely change the fucking gameplay of the game, and it's really frustrating if you don't know that, which I didn't, and I wasted like a half hour trying to beat this stage, not realizing, oh, all I have to do is trial and error, learn how to beat these certain parts, survive them, and then just race them for like the last 10 seconds of the race, and then you actually beat the game. So it's really frustrating, a lot of really big misses here during the campaign of the game that I just don't understand. Now there's also challenge mode, let's talk about that. Challenge mode is basically a mode that unlocks while you're playing the campaign of Need for Speed the Run and it unlocks more stages for you. So for example, there's a limited edition playlist they call it, which is just a set of five challenges where you'll get certain cars like a Camaro and you have to beat a Porsche on a certain map. And then, okay, so now you're the Porsche, now you have to beat a time trial. Okay, now you're the Porsche, now you have to beat five cars on this map. So there's absolutely no new gameplay whatsoever. It's just more of the same stuff that you did during the campaign with no real variety to it. It's just, okay, beat it, and then try to beat our times. If you beat the times, you get medals, which could lead to vehicle unlocks or achievements or trophies, depending on what console you're playing on. But really... Once you've beaten the campaign, you've seen everything this game has to offer. Unless you're trying to milk every ounce of, of gameplay out of this game, you're probably not going to see too much you know, out of quality out of the challenge mode of Need for Speed to Run. Now, just the kicker to everything. Let's talk about the online play of Need for Speed to Run. Just like the campaign, you're going to have the same game mode. There's no difference. You're going to be racing against people 99% um, of the time, and it's going to be based off of different, again, different playlists. So you can have a exotic cars playlist where everyone picks exotic cars and they race on certain tracks. You can do muscle car playlist. You can do supercar playlist and uh, underground playlists, which are more like the Fast and the Furious style cars. So you can do that and you can play online. Right off the bat, Need for Speed The Run says, you know what, we choose to ignore the past 10 years of development of any game that's ever been played online. We're going to make it so that you cannot mute any player who plays with you. And just the first, the only set that I ever played online, two of the matches were assholes. One guy making all this fucking noise because his mic was too loud or whatever, or maybe he was using his connect mic, and you could hear everything that was going on in his house. His phone was fucking ringing, he was talking to someone over here, to which I turned on my headset and I said, Hey, asshole, we're trying to play the fucking game. No one's talking. Turn off your mic. And he got all pissy. Oh, you tell me what to do. He's an asshole. That's the problem. You know there's always going to be assholes on Xbox Live. There will always be assholes on PSN. You need the ability to mute the assholes. Need for speed to run? Fuck that. Why would we have the ability to mute anyone? You know, it's like, since the days of Xbox One and original Xbox Live gameplay, every game has adopted the fact that you need to be able to mute annoying trolls and idiot people. This game says fuck it, so you will be forced to play with assholes. I was forced to play an entire match with a guy blasting rap music. And everyone in the room was pissed off. People were yelling, shut the fucking music off, you cocksucker. And he didn't listen. He just kept blasting it to the point where I said, fuck it, I'm not going to stay. I'm actually having fun playing, but I'm not going to stay because I can't put up with this bullshit and I quit the game. So in addition to that, the game plays pretty much exactly what you would expect from the campaign. It's no different. 
and you're always racing against people online, you know, it's a competitive thing, trying to get first place. The more that you play, you get experience points, they unlock more cars, they level your guy up, yada, yada, yada. But the thing that's the kicker for me, the respawn system is completely inconsistent, and the fact the game is actually bugged in the f fact where it thinks that you're off the track a lot of the times when you're not, so let me explain. You'll be doing making a tight turn, okay? A turn that's literally like this, okay? So you're hit, you're pre ap approaching, actually I should do it this way. You're approaching, you're approaching, you go to turn, everyone maybe turns and hits the wall. You will say, I'm going to do a tight turn. So you do a tight turn, oops, you, you turn too tightly, you went into the dirt. There was actually a point where I went into the dirt, the game said, oh, you went off the track. Took me off the track and respawned me way the fuck back here. And it does this all the time. What the fuck? You're, I hit a shrub, that's it, the race is over? Like, okay, if I'm in the dirt, maybe I drive slower and there's a penalty for that. Don't pull me off the fucking track and put me back here. I didn't fall off the course. I didn't fall off the mountain into a river. I'm still in the fucking race. What the fuck is that about? And a similar thing happened to me. It was just a road, a straight road, and I accidentally veered off a foot. Like, not even a foot off the road. I was in first place. First fucking place. The game said, oh, he's off the track. Lifted me off the track. Put me back here in last fucking place. This game sucks. This game is everything that's wrong with racing games. Bad rubber band AI, really not well thought out stages that are insanely difficult for no fucking reason, not incremental difficulty, too many game bugs that should have been caught, a horrible respawn system that pulls you off the track thinking that you went off the track when you didn't, completely fucking you in races, no ability to mute people online, the game is fucking shit, and it's a shame because I get again. I really wanted to play another good racing game this year. I really like the fact that I'm branching out and trying new genres of games. And so far this year, I'd already had two good ones. This game I really wanted to like, and I can't because it has too much wrong with it. It's a piece of shit. It really should not have been made. And it's so it's so sad to see it squandered because there are some things that are done really well in this game. Some of the races are, again, some of the locales look great. Some of the races are done really well. I really enjoyed the avalanche stage where you're driving on one of the Rocky Mountains. There's an, a snow avalanche. The graphics look great. It's a great set piece. You're dodging snow or whatever. Boulders are coming down. You have to dodge the boulders. It's all done exceptionally well, and it's so much fun when it works. The problem is the detriments, the, the, the bugs, all those things add up to so much fucking frustration that the game is subpar. This isn't even as good as a game, like, uh, the last game where they did Coast to Coast Racing, Cruising USA is better than this game, okay? How old is fucking Cruising USA? Let's think about it. This game sucks, and it's a shame. Using the Frostbite 2 engine, such gorgeous graphics, and, and you know, the, the cars and all the licenses, the game had the potential to be great, but Black Box, who's the designer of this game, and from what I've heard, they're actually the game developers of all of the Need for Speed games that suck ass. The game blows. I can't even give it an average rating because there's so much wrong with it that I can't even say the average person would enjoy this game. The average person will get to that one stage in the middle of the game, that Midwest stage, that's so much fucking harder than the rest of the game, and they're going to say, fuck this piece of shit, I don't want to fucking play it anymore, I'm so frustrated, I want to go play a good game. So, Need for Speed to Run gets a fucking four from me. A fucking four. And the only reason it gets a four is because the graphics are nice, because the music selection was good, and there are a small, small handful of pieces in the campaign that are a lot of fun. The other thing is the online play isn't bad. In fact, uh, I did have a lot of fun playing with the supercar races, but the fact that you're so annoyed by people you can't turn off their fucking mics, and the respawn system is a piece of shit and thinks that you're constantly off the track when you're not, that game... Fucking sucks. It gets a four. One of my fucking most hated games of this year by far, along with Conduit fucking two. That game kind of runs along the same thing with it. Like, what were they thinking? A game with great potential, completely squandered, because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're a bunch of amateurs. Fuck you, Black Box Software, for wasting my fucking time with that stupid fucking game. Mm. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Hateful Truth video game review series, and I hope it was informative, and I'll see you guys next time.